Welcome to today's BICG webinar series dedicated to OBIEE 11G, What Does It Look Like? Thank you all so very much for joining us. During today's webinar, we will be continuing on forward with exploring Oracle's new release of OBIEE 11G and giving you a deeper look at OBIEE 11G, both from an end user and an administration point of view. Before we get started, I'm going to uh, do some brief introductions with the people who are on the phone with us today. My name is Amy Mayer, and I am the president and founder of BI Consulting Group. Along with me, I have Marty Mersinger and Christian Screen, BICG's two solution engineers who dedicate roughly half of their time enabling BI Consulting Group as well as our customers on Oracle's BI and EPM solutions. Marty Mersinger has been working with OBIEE, BI Publisher, and Oracle's BI applications for over 10 years and recently became part of Oracle's deputy CTO program. Christian Screen has been working with OBIEE, the BI applications, and Hyperion SBase for over six years and brings to us superior technical expertise and the aptitude to very quickly master new technologies. Without further ado, I will hand it over to Christian Screen, who will get us started in taking a further look at OBIEE 11G. Hi, thanks, Amy. Appreciate that introduction. And uh, welcome again, everyone, to the uh, 11G webinar series, uh, What Does It Look Like? We're going to step you guys through a, a real nice uh, demo and uh, walkthrough of 11G, just some of the, the new items and um, user interface features that it has to offer. And on the agenda today, we're going to be looking in, at the administration tool. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the WebLogic administration console. Also, the Fusion Middleware Control, which is the Enterprise Manager for 11G OBI. And then, of course, we're going to take a look at the core functional um, front end, which is Analysis, which was previously known as Answers. And then we'll additionally be taking a look at the Map Viewer and the Action Framework, which is part of the actionable intelligence of OBI 11G. And we're just going to jump right into the administration tool. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm logging on to a client machine. And one of the first things I want to do is open up the new Oracle BI administration tool. Now, everything pretty much looks the same as the previous version. But what we'll do is go ahead and log into online mode or open the, the RPD in online mode. And one of the first things that you'll notice is that it prompts for not only the credentials, but a repository password. And the repository password is actually there to encrypt the RPD on the OBI server. And um, in 11G, uh, the repository resides on the OBI server, of course. It's encrypted. And so that means you're no longer able to just double-click an RPD file and open it up. Okay. You have to enter in through the administration uh, tool and then enter the, the appropriate passwords. One of the other things we want to point out in this webinar is the some of the new uh, metadata data source data sources that are available. By going to import metadata, we can see that we've got a couple of different options now. Um, they make an emphasis uh, to point out if your the metadata you're referencing is on a local machine or on a remote server. And one of the big things that we're looking at uh, these days, and it's uh, being looked at by a lot of our clients, is the integration between OBI 11G and the EPM space. And so clearly we can see that we've got the S-space integration. We have the Hyperion ADM um, driver integration, which is for Hyperion financial management. And then we have a couple of uh, new options as well. We, we have the OCI and the Oracle ADF, which is Oracle's application development framework, which is um, pretty much part of the Fusion Middleware stack. And what I want to highlight uh, today was looking at the F-Base integration, which I'm just really going to briefly show you that the connectivity is now really sound in this version of OBI. Okay, so that's just a real quick uh, look at how we're able to get in and pull in the F-Base as a data source. And another thing to point out is now we have some new options with this. As you can see, here's a checkbox for importing uh, UDAs, et cetera. So I'll just cancel 
out of that. And uh, we're going to have some, some webinars um, down the road here shortly on uh, more of a deep dive into integrating um, 11G with the EPM space and EPM tools. What I also want to show is uh, another change in the administration tool. And this is a little more technical, and we're definitely getting to some of the functional things. But we thought this was worth highlighting. One of the options I want to show is that, um, let me back up and do that again. In the menu, we have Manage. And in the path, there was an option for security. And in the 11G release, there's a big push to move the security configuration and administration maintenance away from the administration tool and uh, into Fusion Middleware. And what we're looking at here is the identity management portion of the security manager. And if I click on BI repository, this is going to list out our user objects. And then we have another tab to reference the application roles. And application roles are, are really a, um, a, a fusion control look at almost a grouping, if you will. And with the default installation of 11G, you get a default set of application roles that you can use throughout your implementation. Now, one thing that you might notice is if we look at the, any of the menus here, we don't have the ability to add native users through this console any longer. And this is all going to be, be handled uh, in our, our WebLogic um, server administration console, um, what's referred to now as the policy store. And one thing I also want to point out is that 11G does allow for some backwards compatibility. So here on directory servers, we can right click and you see an option for new LDAP server. So when you're using the 10G to 11G upgrade tool, um, it attempts to take any LDAP um, security um, and move that into this location so that you can then take that and possibly move it into the WebLogic or the Fusion Middleware layer. So that's their primary for, for backwards compatibility, but it's not a best practice going forward. Okay. And so those are just a couple things I want to show you in the, in the administration tool for 11G. And again, with this webinar, we're, we're really talking about 11G. What does it look like? So I want to make sure that I show you guys some of the, the core um, front end screens that you're going to see as um, you go about your implementation with 11G. And uh, one of those is the WebLogic Administration Console, as I mentioned previously. And this is the default uh, application server for 11G. And for those of uh, you who are familiar, if you have teams that implement WebLogic um, as your app server at your organization, you might be um, a, a step ahead of the game simply because you're familiar with this technology. And uh, what I want to show you here is um, a look at security realms. And I mentioned uh, how security is basically now set in the WebLogic server. And it's basically allocated under something called a security realm. And by default, OBI 11G comes with a single security realm called My Realm. And I'll click on that. And you can see there's a lot, there's a lot of features and a lot of options here. I won't go into them all. We'll save that for a later deep dive. But what I want to point out, since I'm just coming from the admin tool, is that by clicking on user groups and, and looking at the user list, we can see that this is where our native users now reside. And if I want to create a new user, I could simply do so by clicking the, the new button. Uh, this is also where um, our groups, our native groups are going to reside as well. As you can see here, we have a BI administrators group, office group, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one note to, to throw out uh, for those who are new to 11G is the fact that there is no longer an administrator login, um, as you saw in 10G, um, where you really just have one core administrator administrator login. Uh, at this point, uh, we basically again have the application roles and the application group, or the BI administrator group and the administrator application role. And to go ahead and let's go ahead and jump into OBIEE and we can take a look at a few of the new interface items. So this is a real nice and clean interface that they developed. Web 2.0 spec 
technology, uh, a nice clean intro screen. And uh, what we're looking at here is the general index for a sample application that basically comes with the 11G install. Uh, it does take a, a decent amount of configuration, but uh, we'll walk through some of the items uh, here. And again, what does it look like? So this is my default. I'm taking a look at, again, just the general index. But if we click on the home page, one thing that Oracle's trying to drive home here is clarity and transparency of actionable items. They want users to be able to get into the tool, and if something needs to be created, edited, or, or quickly referenced, they want to have a single page to be able to do that. And what you can see here on the left side of the window is an immediate uh, create facilitation uh, section of the page, which is basically saying if you want to create an object, then simply click on any of these links to get started based on the, the, the object or the scope that you wish to develop in. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that uh, we really love about 11G is the new dashboard drop-down list. Okay. It's no longer cluttering up the header of your, of, and cluttering up your real estate. It's now in a single drop-down option with a very nice and clean uh, navigation list. Okay. Uh, we also have some advanced options. Again, kind of tucked out of the way, but still um, very visible and um, allows you to click on it easily to get to where you need to go. Uh, one of the items that we really like also is the ability to search through some of the metadata and some of the objects that exist in your 11G um, deployment. And um, this is actually limited to the object names themselves. It would be nice if you could actually search on um, you know, possibly a metadata or a product name coming from your, your presentation uh, or your subject area. But if I want to do something like um, let's look for something with test in it, for example. I'll simply type in test in the search pane, click on search, and now I get basically all of the objects coming through with test in the, the title name. Now, of course, this opens itself up to wildcard searches as well. So here I'll enter just a TE asterisk, click on search, and now clearly I get anything with TE and any um, sort of suffix on it. So here you can see I've got attribute features, um, actionable intelligence, and getting folders, et cetera. 